Happy Wednesday. How are we doing? I want to talk to you today about a financial, a demanding financial prayer that works. Really works. Pulled us through one of the hardest times of our lives. A demanding financial prayer. I'm going to tell you how we did it, how you can do it, and how it works every single time. Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart, getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Great things are coming my way. Everything always works out for me. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I am made rich by the poverty of Jesus. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor. Because I get results. If you're just watching this for the first time today, you will learn things in these videos that you've never seen before. You will be encouraged, motivated, healed, made prosperous, find new jobs, find, learn to find, learn to get anything that you need or want from God. God's word says, Jesus said, whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. No limitations. All things are possible to them that believe. Tell all your friends about these videos. Make sure you hit the like button, especially on YouTube, because that gets us our videos out there so people can see them. Subscribe. Go, tell, go to the invite button if you're watching this on our Facebook group, which a lot of people do. Invite all your friends to join. Invite all your friends to join. You could save somebody's life just by telling them about this ministry. Tell them to call Pastor Jim if they're sick. I get referral calls every single day. And these people get miracles. God does miracles right over the phone. I wrote the book on miracles. And the power of the Holy Spirit has no boundaries. God does, does miracles over the phone just as quick as he'll do them in person. So tell everybody you know, nobody needs to be sick or broke as long as I'm here. And I answer the phone. Not my secretary, not the church staff, not a group of people sitting around waiting to pray for you. Me. I pray for you. I bless you. I break all the curses. I am determined you are going to live a curse-free, blessed life. And I use the power in the name of Jesus to make it happen. Make sure you call today when you do your offerings and donations and your tithe. A lot of people tithe to this ministry. And the reason they do is because I speak God's word for word blessing over them when they do. And that is so important. There is a huge connection between the blessing and the tithe. Huge. Abraham knew it. He tithed to the priest who spoke the blessing over him. Genesis chapter 14. And his descendants still do that today. That's why 85% of them live in absolute abundance. When we went to Bible school, we... And this comes from our How to Pray the book, our How to Pray book. We we went to Bible college in 1993. We left Tomahawk, Wisconsin. We had a beautiful home in Tomahawk, Wisconsin. I had my own business. Mary had a very good job. And we were doing fine. Plus, we had a little church. Little church. And we were just enjoying it so much and just wonderful people. But Mary had said, if you want to be in ministry, you need more training. 
So we decided to go to Bible college and the Lord told us that both of us were supposed to go to school. So Mary and I both enrolled at Rama, and we were, we put in applications and we, we were accepted. And it was an amazing thing just to be accepted there at the time, because there was so many people trying to get in. But we went and we took enough money with us to last us for the two years that we were going to be there. But Whoever said the best laid plans of mice and men? We ran out of money in four months. I mean, ran out of money. Now, I was working and get, trying to get established selling health insurance part time because we had to go to school. And that was not taken off. Although I was making a few sales, but it really wasn't taken off too much. And we were struggling. So Mary, on a Wednesday afternoon, figured up our bank balance. And she announced that we were had that we had 58 cents in our bank account. 58 cents. We had bills coming up. We had tuition coming up. We had rent coming up. We had no money and no money coming in. And there we are in a strange city, miles and miles from home. And we had left everything, closed the business. She quit her job, sold our house. That was the money we took with us. And here we are sitting in a strange city, broke. Now, that's a terrible feeling, folks. So we went to church that night, Wednesday night. And we had checked through the couch, you know, dug down in the couch, dug down in the seats of the car, looked underneath the car seat, trying to pull out the change. We had a little bit of change, very little. And we went to church that night. And time to take up the offering. Here comes the bucket down the aisle. And they always tell us at Rama, never let the bucket go by. So here comes the bucket. And I op got my wallet out and there was nothing in there but a $10 bill. Mary had no money. I pulled that $10 bill out of my wallet. Mary looks at me and she says, I hope you're hearing from the Lord. I dropped it in that bucket. And it, everything started to go in slow motion. Do you ever have your life slow down to slow motion? And it just fluttered and dropped down. Somebody grabbed the bucket and away it went. And that was the end of our money. We didn't have money for food. Well, the next morning, I'm reading my yearly Bible. They gave us a yearly Bible. I remember Mrs. Hagen told us, Lynette told us, make sure you read that every day. So I did. We went there and we purposed ourselves to do what they said, when they said, and how they said. We didn't take our own ideas there. We went to get their ideas and their teaching. And so what we did was we did everything they told us to do. And they told us to read that Bible. We read it. And the the reading for Proverbs was Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. It was on a Thursday morning. And I'm sitting downstairs reading my Bible at 6 o'clock on Thursday morning. And this is what I read right here. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. It says, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst out with new wine. What? Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. That's the tithe. So shall your barns be filled with plenty. That's your bank account. 
and your presses shall burst out with new wine. That means more than you need. And I stood up. I said, excuse me, but I have honored you with my substance and with the first fruits of all my increase. We've been tithers for years and my barn's not full. What's going on here? Now I'm talking to the Lord. When you're talking to the Lord, you're praying. I said, you didn't fill my barns. You're supposed to fill my barns because I'm a tither. Now, what's going on? I've given you everything I got. I gave you my last $10. Do you see this? Excuse me, sir, but do you see this? It says you will fill my barns and cause my presses to burst out with new wine. You give me more than I need. And I don't have it. Let's go. I have given you everything I got. Now it's your turn to bless me. And you bless me right now. I got a wife upstairs who deserves to be taken care of. I got rent coming up. I got tuition coming up. And I'm broke. Now you bless me and you do it right now. And I mean to tell you, I was beside myself on this. Because God's word was not working in my life the way it said. And I started to demand that it work that way. This is what you said. I didn't say this. I didn't make this deal. You did. You made this deal. That if I would bring my, my the first fruits of my increase, the first fruits, the first 10%, that you would fill my barns. Now you do it. You do what you said you would do. I have done what you told me to do. Now you do what you said you would do. Let's go. And I mean right now. All of a sudden, after a couple hours, of this, I did this for a couple hours. I mean, I was really down on this. Do you ever get down with somebody? Do you ever get into a fight? That's how it felt. I mean, I'm going at it. I am demanding that God bless me because I've done what he said he would do. Now it's up to him to do what he said he would do. I did what he told me to do. Now he needs to do what he said he would do. All of a sudden, this peace came over me. I sat down. So here comes Mary downstairs, and we get ready to go to class. We get to school, and we're walking down the hall toward our first class. And here somebody comes down the hall that I knew. He reached out his hand to shake hands with me, and I reached out my hand to shake hands with him. And he put something in my hand. And, I, and he never stopped. He just kept right on going. I looked down in my hand. There was $200 there. That afternoon, our finances broke wide open. Money started coming from every direction. God gave me ideas on how to sell that insurance. And I mean to tell you, did we make money? We made a ton of money selling health insurance. I was the number one health insurance salesman for two different companies. I was giving motivational speeches to insurance companies, to their sales forces, and I was working part-time. I was the number one salesman in the state for two different companies. Glory to God. That's what the Lord did for us. Demanding financial prayer. And it worked. It works. You call me today. I'll get you started on that demanding financial prayer. And I'll pray it over you. I'll demand. If you're a tither to this ministry, I will demand that God bless you. And he will.